Hey guys, it's me, Danny, back with another video, and it's related to the Pi again. So in this video, I will show you how to install a VPN on your Raspberry Pi. Uh, what a VPN basically is, is it is a tunnel from whatever network you are currently on to uh, normally a different server, but since this is on a Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi is going to be the server. It basically redirects the traffic through your Pi and then goes back to wherever server or ISP your Pi is on. So this is basically, it's a one-line script and then it's it's the same thing with Pi Hole. So first thing you want to do, assuming that you haven't uh, installed Raspberry Pi OS on an SD card yet, you want to go over to, on Raspberry Pi, go over to Downloads, and then go uh, for the Raspberry Pi Imager. Choose the one for your operating system. In my case, it's Mac OS, which I already have. So I'm going to open that up. And it's this is basically a way to flash an OS to an SD card. And you're going to want to insert your SD card, which I already have. Uh, you're going to want to click this first one, which is Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit. And 32-bit basically works with everything, so you want to choose that. Uh, you want to select your SD card, and you're going to want to click right. And then on Mac OS, it wants you to uh, insert your password, so I'll do that. And it's basically going to take a few minutes, and it's going to be writing the actual operating system onto the SD card, and I'll be back when it's finished. Okay, so I'm back from uh, waiting like 10 or 15 minutes waiting for the OS to be installed. So this, when it's done, it's going to uh, unmount your SD card. So you're going to want to basically unplug it and put it back in. And uh, this step is basically for headless, which means that uh, you don't have to uh, plug in the Pi into a thing. So I'm going to copy over these two files, I'll show you what they are. Uh, I'm going to open the example file because I'm not going to give you guys my actual Wi-Fi password and stuff. So basically this is to automatically, when your Pi boots up, to automatically connect to the SSID that you gave it and with the password and you might want to change the country to whatever two letter country code you're in. And uh, that's basically uh, everything inside it. So you gotta just want to change uh, SSID and PSK and country if it's not US. So you're gonna want to eject this, and then you're gonna want to take that SD card and put it into the Pi, which I'm going to do now. So I have inserted my SD card into the Pi. If you decide that you do want to uh, actually put in a monitor and keyboard and mice and everything, you're basically going to just, I'll have a timestamp in the description, because it's basically the same thing except that you just plug in an HDMI cable and power it and hook up a uh, keyboard and mice. So the, basically, uh, once you've done that, you don't uh, want to go into terminal, and I'm just gonna make this a bit longer. And assuming that you are on either Linux or Mac OS, you're gonna want to type in ssh pi at one nine two. Actually, that's not gonna work. Uh, let me just because you have to. Uh, I've done this multiple times, so. It basically has a hash of the actual Raspberry Pi, and I got deleted every time. So I'm gonna do that right now. Known hosts. I type in my password. So you're gonna want to do ssh pi at raspberry pi dot local, assuming that you don't have a second Raspberry Pi on your network. So you're gonna want to type in yes. On Windows, it's uh, you don't have to do this, but you do have to install PuTTY, which is basically an SSH client 
uh, on Mac and Linux, SSH is already built in. So it's going to ask you for your password, which by default it's Raspberry. And you're going to want to do that. And that's basically. So on Windows, you have to install Putty for the, I believe it's host name, it's raspberrypi.local. Or for the, yeah. So you're going to want to go over to pyvpn.io for the one line. You're going to want to copy this and you're going to want to paste it. Which, uh, if you're doing this uh, not headless for whatever reason, it's curl dash capital L and then install.pyvpn.io space and then it's the. You hold shift and backslash because. Uh, I, I don't even know what that character is called, and then space and then bash, which this is basically going to, actually, before you type in that, since the uh, apt get update, you uh, right before you want to do sudo apt get update, and then this basically just gets all the updates for the actual pi, which, uh, if you run this script, uh, it's still gonna do it, but it's gonna ask you to reboot, and you're gonna have to retype this in. So, also, if you're wondering what this uh, caret and C is, it's basically to uh, stop whatever's working. So it's Control C to make it not uh, continue. So this is gonna take a few minutes, and then once you actually after this, uh, which it's gonna finish soon. You want to go type in sudo apt get upgrade, which it's going to take about like 10 20 minutes. So, and if you just want to leave the computer, you can do uh, dash y, which basically just it's going to ask you to type in uh, do you want to continue. It, this basically just doesn't do that. So, you can literally just walk away from your computer and wait a few minutes. Okay, so I'm back from uh, waiting for this to uh, update, and uh, you're also, after that, you're going to want to do sudo apt get um, auto remove, which will just, uh, normally there's one package that's automatically installed, but it's, uh, uh, or it, it doesn't do anything except take up space. So, I mean, this doesn't use that much space anyways. You have, like, anywhere from an 8 to whatever. This thing only takes a few uh, megabytes. Uh, so, after that, you're going to want to uh, retype in that uh, command, which is that. And that's basically just going to do the thing. So, after, like, about a minute, it's going to give you the screen that just says uh, that's going to turn your Pi into a uh, VPN server and then it's going to want a static IP address which uh, since if it shows you the IP address is the IP that you actually want then uh, press yeah, yes but uh, since it isn't uh, I'm going to click no because I have to uh, reconfigure that and then this is basically your gateway, so uh, on like any device that's connected to internet or specifically your Wi-Fi, just go on there, go into more details about the Wi-Fi, and then this is normally either 192.168.1.1 or 192.168.0.1, which if you look it up, uh, then it would give you your router page. And since these are correct, uh, normally on Raspberry Pi OS, there's only one user, so it's Pi, so it's that's the only thing that I have. And it's going to take some more time. And then um, you have the option of either choosing WireGuard or OpenVPN. WireGuard is newer, and it doesn't use as much battery on whatever device you're using 
because it doesn't do as many handshakes and only does it when it needs to. So I'm just going to go with wire guard and installing and stuff. So you'll get to uh, this screen, which this is going to take literally the longest. Okay, so I'm back from uh, waiting like a long time. And uh, so for uh, the next thing you're going to see after that probably half an hour is uh, getting it ask you for the port that you're going to port forward later, which uh, I'll just keep it uh, for this, but in you actually use it, you might want to change it just uh, for the thing. Uh, since this, uh, I'm going to use the. Uh, oh, yeah, that's. Uh, normally, if you had this with a pie hole, which I normally have it, but I decided to not install it this time, uh, I'm just going to use custom. Actually, yeah. And uh, it's just going to generate the private key, and then it's going to do stuff. Uh, so this basically asks you for unattended upgrades, which just a uh, security upgrade or patches uh, without you having to do anything. So I would suggest you uh, click yes. And it's... Yeah, get another loading screen. And that's kind of, once it's done, it's just going to give you this installation complete. It just uh, shows you how to uh, use it. So uh, I'm going to reboot now, and it's going to reboot. And you're going to, it's, you're going to want to sign back in, and it might take like a minute for it to reboot and you now want to SSH into it again. Okay, so I am back from uh, uh, waiting like a minute and uh, SSHing into it. And uh, you got for when you actually want to put a new device, you know, want to type in pyvpn a and you want to uh, set a name, which I'll just name it Danny's phone and it's gonna start generating the client keys and stuff and then when you are ready to uh, actually put it on uh, a device you want to type in pi VPN QR and type in whatever index you want to do and for this it's what I would assume most people do is on their phone but you can also do it on desktop so I'll show both those ways. But before you do those, that, you're going to want to go over to um, your router settings, which I have this, uh, because I go on there a lot. And you want to, and I don't know what I'm even typing. So you want to sign into your router. You want to go down to uh, port forwarding. And you got to uh, select for whatever thing you have. Uh, mine's Raspberry Pi 0 0 or just look for the IP address that you set earlier and then you want to click custom port and go down to UDP and then you gotta set uh, whatever thing you set for the port so you want to just add that and I'm just gonna apply and now time to go onto my phone okay so I'm on my phone as you can see by the vertical uh, on basically any phone, which I'm not sure if they have it on Windows Phone or whatever, assuming they even use that, which I'm on iOS, and um, you basically have to download the WireGuard app, which I'm pretty sure you do the, yeah, on a Play Store or iOS, and then, um, you go, you want to go back to your uh, computer, uh, you want to click create from QR code and make sure the QR code is actually on your computer screen. So I'm going to this and I'm going to do that again just because it's blurry. Which, I mean, it's close enough. I'll name this uh, Raspberry Pi. All right, and it's going to ask you for your 
VPN configuration or IRS, it's going to ask you for your password, which I'm not going to show you guys my password. So once uh, I typed in my password, just gives you this. And basically all these, uh, I, I'm literally going to remove this off my Pi and just because of uh, this. So once you turn on your VPN and once you, one way you can check if it's working is literally by switching over to cellular data, going over to uh, turning on the VPN, going on to something such as your router, which is default 192.168.01 or 192.168.11. Or you can just go back to the terminal and uh, type in pyvpn-c, which basically just tells you when the last time the device was seen. And that's probably why. Uh, but yeah, that that's just going to give you back. The router page, which normally you can't access on cellular because there, there is a router, but it's completely separate. I don't know why it's loading right now. Uh, probably the HTTPS, but yeah, it, it's just going to give you a page that, or anything that you, you can only look up at on your internet at home or whatever. Uh, for whatever reason, it isn't working, but you can just test it out with PyVPN-C. Okay, so I'm back from uh, uh, my phone, and if you want to use the VPN on desktop, if you ever use public Wi-Fi or anything, or you don't trust that Wi-Fi, uh, for whatever reason, you have your desktop or laptop or whatever, uh, you want to go over to the WireGuard website, you want to go up here where it's uh, on the top left corner, click installation, and depending on what OS you have, you can use Windows, which choose either 32 or 64, but since I have Mac OS, it's through the App Store for whatever reason. So I already downloaded it, and the only option is to import tunnel from the file. And uh, normally, or go over to your high SSH window, and then you want to go type in slash or cd space forward slash etc and then uh, you want to type in sudo chmod777 and then wireguard because normally you can't go into the wireguard directory which is where all the keys are stored so you want to click uh, or you want to give yourself permissions to actually go in there so I already did that, and then you want to cd into WireGuard. So after you go into the WireGuard directory, you want to do uh, nano uh, wg, and then just press tab. And this is basically the information about the thing, so I'm just going to copy this. And you want to go over this, and this you can just paste it back in. And I'll just name this pi. Click save. It's going to ask you for uh, VPN stuff. And then if you activate, which I literally have, or, yeah, uh, I have literally no way of uh, doing this since I'm not going to turn on my uh, phone's hotspot and stuff. But this basically should allow you to uh, use any device on your network from anywhere without any port forwarding with the exception of port forwarding your uh, Raspberry Pi and that is basically all for this video and I will see you if I ever decide to make another video